several days of Congress. There's a lot of information of this issue, so I'm only gonna give you the basics, okay? So, uh, that's my name. I was diagnosed at the age of 19 years old on the August 10th of 2006. I was finishing high school and uh, I was transplanted uh, 10 months later on April 19 of 2007 at the Western uh, National Medic Center of the Social Security Mexican Institute, okay? Uh, my donor was my aunt, he, she was 45 years that time. Uh, we got a compatibility of 83%. Uh, we had to measure with the human leukocytary antigen and we got five from six of compatibility. And I got until now any complication and any rejection of the organ, okay? So we're gonna see that the chronic kidney disease is a worldwide disease. In every single continent, you will find large amount of patients with this kind of problems. It's a very severe problem, it's a sad problem, and every single country uh, have those kinds of, of pathology, okay? This pathology doesn't respect gender, age, social status, anything. But anyone could develop a chronic kidney disease, he says that one over 10 persons around the world will develop uh, kidney, kidney disease, chronic kidney disease. So also, if one of you have diabetes, hypertension, or relatives, talking about father and mother with those kind of problems, uh, be careful in order to not develop in further or further complication to develop the chronic kidney disease, okay? Do you recognize her? Okay, Selena Gomez, okay? So even rich and famous people uh, could have those kind of, of pathology, no? She developed it because she had another uh, disease that is lupus, and the complication, one of the major complications of lupus is the chronic kidney disease. So also she got a kidney transplant, okay? So what's the chronic kidney disease? A chronic kidney disease is a condition that consists of progressive, permanent, and the most important, irreversible uh, loss of the function of both kidneys. We're talking about both kidneys. When one is affected and the other one is quite right, they can do the same functions to cover the unhealthy kidney. So in a chronic, uh, in a renal uh, loss, uh, we're talking about the both kidneys, okay? But what do the kidneys do? They, uh, the kidneys do a lot, a lot of, of things. The most common things that uh, we as a physician and the ordinary people, well, you as a student and the ordinary people know that the filtration of the blood, no? They tell you that the kidneys filtrate the blood to separate the toxin and everything, but they do a little bit more, you know? They maintain the fluid balance in the body, regulate the minerals, body fluids, sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, regulate the acid-base balance in the blood, filter metabolic waste from the blood, the most common, urea and creatinine, uh, regulate the blood pressure, all the person who will develop chronic kidney disease also will develop hypertension because of, of this. Uh, in my case, I was, uh, by the time I get diagnosed, back in 2006, I was, my blood pressure was uh, 200 over 120, and I don't feel a thing because my body get used to an, every, uh, a major level of blood pressure. So that's the reason. And also activate vitamin D to maintain healthy bones and regulate the production of red blood cells. The erythropoietin is a normal that capacitates the red blood cell in order to live 120 days. And because the loss of that uh, hormone, the, all the patients with uh, chronic kidney disease will develop anemia, okay? 
Okay, some some factors as we as we saw the uh, hypertension and diabetes are the two most important risk factors for developing this kind of pathology. Another one is uh, glomerular disease. This is the more common um, disease that will cause a chronic renal failure in uh, young people. As myself, I get a disease and then I get um, the insufficiency of, the, of both kidneys. There are uh, type 1 diabetes, cystic hereditary nephritis tumors, and uh, there, there will be another rare uh, pathology that can also cause uh, the chronic kidney disease, okay? And as we say, 10% uh, of the population worldwide is affected with chronic kidney disease and million each year. But the sad thing is that most of the person doesn't know that they have a certain level of chronic kidney disease. Remember, as the chronic kidney disease is divided in five stages, from one to five. And uh, we all start with the stage one, and in, on those stages, is without symptoms, you don't feel a thing. The kidneys doesn't hurt, never, in, in these cases. The, the kidneys only hurt if it's a kidney stone involved, if it's a massive tumor, or it's an infection. But with an, a failure of the kidney, you will never experience pain. That's the sad part because by the time you're feeling actually the, the major symptoms, the pathology is way too advanced and nothing you can do to prevent. You have to go into a dialysis, hemodialysis, or a kidney transplant, okay? So, for example, um, this is the healthy kidney, and this is the, the red part is the blood. The little spots are the proteins, the most important protein, the albumin, and there's the filter, the, the um, the blue part and the yellow part of the urine. The proteins always has to be on the bloodstream. But by the time the kidney is um, unhealthy, those particulars, uh, particles of uh, proteins grow through the urine, uh, to the urine and they start peeing actually uh, proteins. So this is the first stage for developing a chronic kidney disease. If you make a test of the urine and you saw uh, any microalbumin urine or actually proteins in the uh, urine sample, be careful, something's happened in your kidneys. Maybe the renal function is quite all right already, but something, maybe you're in stage one and stage two, and by that time, you can actually make something to prevent this kind of issue getting worse, okay? So a little a little facts, okay? The risk factors, well, well we already said, 10% of the adults have some level of CKD, and one in a three is in a risk of developing CKD, okay? This is important, CKD kills more people than breast cancer or prostate cancer, okay? So it's a, it's a massive pathology, okay, around the world. 90% of the patients are over 60 years old and most of these patients previously are diabetic and hyper, with hypertension or both, okay? And around 38 million in USA, in Habitants have CK day in a stage from three to five, but most of them doesn't know it because there's no symptoms in previous stages, okay? Okay, a lot of, uh, this is our facts about talking about money. This is a very, very um, high cost uh, pathology. Uh, here in Mexico, for example, the social security, the social security from every 10 pesos that are destined for the social security, 4.5 pesos are for uh, kidney diseases. So it's a very high budget uh, disease, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, one stage five patient costs 80,000 euros annually 
uh, uh, for, for one person, okay? And uh, as you see all the all the statics, statistics, you can see that this kind of, of pathology is very, very expensive. And it's more cheaper if you could prevent you as a physician in uh, low stages, uh, uh, one, two, even three, you can prevent to uh, uh, get this patient until this stage that when nothing we can do, uh, only a transplant or a therapy such as perinatal dialysis or hemodialysis, okay? Okay, so this is was me at that time. The creatinine levels are between 0.5 and 1.2 in normal rate. I was 12.5, okay? Urea is from 15 to 45. I was 256. Hemoglobin, I was 9. Potassium, 7.2. The size of the kidney is like the size of your fist, like that. And in an average, 12 over 10 centimeters. And mine was 3 over 3, okay? And my total renal fusion was 3% in both kidneys. And I was talking like I'm talking now. I don't feel a thing by the time I go into the hospital, okay? So this is the symptoms or the signs that you can see on your body when, you, uh, when we think up about um, a chronic kidney disease. The, one of the in most advanced stages could be foam on the on the urine. If you if you saw foam on the urine, you are urinating proteins. So be careful, something's happened. The urine doesn't have to to have foam. It has to be liquid and by the time you're finished urinating, the, the water looks yellow, but that's it, without foam. So be careful. Another one, swelling, uh, edema of the lower extremities and in first place. Uh, fatigue is very common to experience fatigue. Uh, itching in all the body because the high levels of urea in all the, the bloodstream cause itching and pruritus. Headaches, this is because the increase of the blood pressure, the sign and the symptom is, is headaches. This is one of the only signs that I, I had, and by that time, I think that was a normal headache. I took Tylenol, the headache disappeared, but the pressure continued to go up, up, and also the, the, the disease, the, the renal failure, keep, keep growing, okay? And uh, also, uh, excuse me, the, the last one, it, this is shortness of breath, dyspnea. And, then, and this one is fatigue, okay? And then when there's advanced stages of this uh, disease, you can experience high levels of blood pressure, uh, edema in the, in the face or in the arms, in, in, the, in the high part of the body, and nausea and vomiting. But by the time these kind of, of problems appear, the uh, disease is way too advanced. Okay. So this is not me, this is the, the press. The New York Times is saying that because of the, of the kidney disease and uh, the amounts of people is overwhelming. In, in, in a newspaper of Puerto Rico said that the, the, the cases about a chronic uh, kidney disease are increasing on the island. And here in Mexico says that uh, uh, chronic kidney disease is an, a disease with risk and cost because uh, for our country is is very pricey the, this kind of, of pathology. Okay. Okay, and the pathology is very expensive because all the this is hemodialysis. This is the the ultimate therapy for the renal uh, failure. This is an actual patient. They put an artificial vein that is called fistula. 
is inserted in the arm or in the leg, and this in this fistula is like a, like an artificial vein, and you put uh, those those wires, their connectors, they are like like holes where the their blood pass, and they pass through a machine that is the hemodialysis machine that had a filter and the toxins are being reduced because of that filter. Never get in normal patterns, but they get a little bit low, okay? This kind of, of therapy, uh, the, the best way to do it is three times a week, and the therapy session lasts from three to four hours, okay? That was the one that I, I used, and I uh, at first you use a catheter on the subclavia artery and go straight down to the heart. Okay, so I got my own catheter and I went to those kind of, of therapies. Okay, here in Mexico, this is very expensive. There are very few machines, so uh, most of the people doesn't have this kind of therapy. Have the second one that is the peri peritoneal dialysis. This is quite different. You have another kind of catheter, this is called a tank of catheter. They pass through the abdominal area and pass through the peritoneum, and the peritoneum um, re, uh, makes the function as a filter. And they insert a bag with special fluids that comes into the peritoneum, wash it, and then uh, comes out, and that's the therapy to low the toxins. The sad part of this is uh, this kind of therapy is every single day, four times a day, okay? So the quality of life is very, very low for, for these cases. And the catheter can be infected very, very easily, and between one and another, I prefer always hemodialysis, okay? Medications, medications are very, very important. And a patient with renal insufficiency, or renal failure, got a lot of medication. I take, I guess, like 20 pills a day because I have to supply every single vitamin, protein, everything that my my body cannot cannot uh, process. I, I have to take it artificially. So a patient with those kind of pathology took vitamins, calcium, uh, be complex, folic acid, they inject erythropoietin, the hormone that produces the, the, the kidney, the shots of iron to prevent the anemia, everything. And this, this kind of medication is every single day medication and they are very, very expensive. Another one, lab test. Until now, I had to uh, make a lot of lab tests every single month to make sure my kidney is quite all right. Also, in the chronic kidney disease, you have to take lab tests and also image tests every single uh, month to make sure uh, or to control the disease, okay? Also, they are very expensive because there's no just a CBC and like that. There's several uh, laboratories to make sure the kidney is okay, okay? Medic medical attendance, every single month I have to go to my nephrologist to make sure everything is all right. Also, it's very expensive. And uh, hospital location, maybe for complications, I don't know, the patient have to go to the hospital, and also that's very expensive. Here in Mexico, uh, we have the social security, and we, it's very low for us, the patient doesn't cost a thing was that with our salary, at one point twenty five percent is is retired from from our salary to to cover this insurance, and it's very very low comparing to the all the things that I need every single month. For example, right now my medications in pesos or what well, in in dollars, uh, it's about. Um, like one thousand dollars every single month, every single month. It, it, it costs my medication, and in the social security, it for free. I got I got it for free. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna 
talk you about one thing, one analogy that I call the tripod. Remember a tripod is a device that has three legs and if we pull out one leg, the other two pull down. Okay, that's a tripod. So in order, as you are uh, further physicians, encourage your patients to be controlled, to be under control in a chronic kidney disease in order to be a successful transplant person, you have to encourage to make this tripod. The first leg is the renal replacement therapy that could be hemodialysis or dialysis. The second one are the medications. Medications are necessary to compensate for the metabolic function that the body has stopped performing due to the uh, uh, insufficiency. Also, the new medication and also the, uh, the other medication because maybe the patient previously is diabetic, has hypertension, has another disease. Also, those medications are important to keep taking, okay? The absorption of vitamins, production of erythropoietin, regulation of blood pressure, control of liquids, okay? And the diet, very, very important day, and I think is the most difficult part for convince your patient to take a good diet, okay? A diet according to the needs and metabolic deficiency of an insufficient kidney is essential to avoid degenerative progression of the disease. The diet consists in low salt because sodium absorbs too much water and retains fluids, okay? So, no salt. Imagine everything with no salt. For, for 10 months that I got this kind of, of disease, it's very, very bad. You have to eat everything without salt, but you have to make the effort in order to, to get well. Low in fat because if you are, um, if you become more fat, it's not because, um, I'm sorry, if you, if you are, uh, if you uh, start to, to eat, to eat with a lot of fat, the metabolic process and all the medication that you need, you also can need more medication because you are increasing the fat of your body. And there's another complication because of that consumption. Low in sugar is because you can develop diabetes when you are with a chronic kidney disease. Yes, because you cannot process well the sugar and you can get a massive complication such as diabetes in first place when you don't have it. Low in liquids intake because your kidneys are not functioning anymore. So you you are retaining those liquids. For example, myself. I have permission to take only 500 milliliters of liquid per day, including the water for taking the pills, jellos, uh, soups, everything. Only 500 milliliters per day. It's very, very few, but it is necessary. And restriction in alcohol. Why? Because, not because they will affect the kidney. Also because the liver that metabolizes the alcohol is very useful uh, when by the time you are transplanted because all the medication that you have to take is metabolized by the liver. And if you have an unhealthy liver, you cannot be transplanted, okay? Okay, so for example, if you do very perfectly the diet, take the medication, but you don't attend to a, a therapy for, for renal dysfunction, sooner or later, you're gonna be dead, like that, okay? Because the in, uh, increase of the toxins, the urea, the creatinine. If you go to the therapy, do uh, take your medication, but you don't respect the diet, sooner or later, complication and complication, more medication, more therapy, everything, okay? And finally, if you uh, don't take the medication, you do the diet, you do the therapy, but you don't took the medication, all the things that your body doesn't process, the and you don't take the medication, sooner or later, your, your body gets a lot of complications also, okay? So, the protocol transplant, the transplant protocol, it begins by the time you are informed that you have a chronic kidney disease. And uh, it's a series of laboratory tests, image, uh, image tests, uh, medical 
assistance in order to complete the protocol to get a transplant, okay? The first thing that you have to know uh, for the receptor, o sea, as myself, there are some contraindications for uh, receiving a kidney, okay? Some are active neoplasia with short life of, of expectancy. This is because, okay, maybe they can get transplanted, but soon will that because this kind of, of, of pathology, okay? Chronic disease with short life of uh, expectancy, maybe the patient is way too bad with the, with the renal failure and uh, you don't, is not um, useful but at that time, a, a transplant. Active drug or alcohol consumption because of the labor. Uh, severe organic is insufficiency without possibility of correction. And psychosis not controlled. If the patient mentally health is not too well to receiving a transplant, you don't get transplant, okay? Uh, and relative uh, contraindication are active infection, coronary heart disease, severe peripheral vascular disease, cerebral vascular disease, hepatitis inactivity, active pep peptic ulcer, no adherence to problem treatment, and HIV infection. Those are relative contraindications. The patient actually can be transplanted, but you have to control your patient first in order to be transplanted, okay? So, the second step, what is finding your donor, okay? Sometimes it's the most difficult part finding a donor because there's a lot of misunderstanding about this kind of, of pathologies, about this kind of issue, about transplant, that many people have a, a, their body okay, their health is okay, but they, they don't want to, to donate a, an organ because they think something's gonna happen. They're gonna die, then sooner or later they're gonna develop renal uh, failure, everything. So remember that nowadays every single one of you could be a donor, a donor. Could be your mother, your father, your sibling, your cousin, even a strange. And nowadays could be a donor for a kidney, okay? Where do the kidney transplants come for? First, uh, for a living donor and ask the best kidneys that you can have and for a, for a donor who has loved his life, okay? For a person with, with I don't know, a, a car crash or an, a previous pathology that affects the brain, they have loss of, of the brain and you can use the actual, not only the kidney and other organs, but it's better to have from a living donor, okay? Okay, the requirements for the living donor, uh, this is from the Just Hus uh, John Hopkins um, clinic. The living donors, as, as I said, could be siblings, parents, relatives, friends, in law neighbors, co workers, religious service members, even altruistic strangers. Okay, good physical and mental health, must be at least 18 years old, must have a body mass index that is less than 35, because there's more complication even with the surgery. It's way too complicated with an increase of the body mass index. Must be free from infections, transmittable, and chronic diseases. In addition, live organs donors should have a strong support system to rely on an emotional and physical needs during this time. It's very, very important, okay? Okay, so the golden rule for the receptor and you have to realize as a receptor, as a person who have actually a, a kidney failure, that no one owes you a kidney. No one. Even your father, even your mother, even your your siblings, if they don't want to give you your uh, their kidney, it is it's okay. Because there's no law in heaven or in earth that say that by the time I get uh, this kind of disease, it's an obligation of my family, of my father, of his siblings, and my siblings to give me their kidney. No. Uh, make sure you as a physician to give this uh, information, to give this golden rule to the receptor, to, to be conscient to, uh, if, the, if it's the case, 
they got a transplant to be very, very grateful because no one owes you a kidney. And if you're going to donate a kidney, there's a, another golden rule that don't make any study talking about a lab tests or image tests, even the most simple, if you are not fully sure, you are going to donate. Because it's very sad that you almost finish the transplant protocol and you say, no, I'm sorry, but uh, I think it very well and I don't want to give you my kidney anymore. So it's very, very bad for, for the other person. So make, make very, very sure what you are doing, okay? So <clears throat> the transplant process, the preliminary medical evaluation, the patient, receiver, and donor will undergo into basic preliminary evaluation to see if they are eligible to receive and donate a transplant, okay? This is with the nephrologist. They say, okay, I got CKD, and this is my donor. And the nephrologist will uh, give and prescribe uh, several tests in order to know if your donor is quite okay to give you a transplant, okay? Then, the secondary medical evaluation, when everything is all right in preliminary uh, evaluation, the receiver and the donor patient are referred to a specialized third level hospital attending several specialists where they will begin a series of clinical laboratory and imaging tests, okay? This is the Social Security Hospital. This is the Western uh, Medical Center of the Social Security here in Guadalajara. That's where I was transplanted. Some of the four semester uh, students actually go to the clinical rotation to that to that hospital right now, and uh, this is the all, this is one of the parts that uh, have the kidney transplantation. Okay, so you're gonna see quite a few uh, specialists in order to finish the, the protocol. Quite a few. Uh, cardiology, genetics, anesthesiology, urology, odontology, psychiatry, nephrology, nutrition, pneumology, oncology, angiology, gastroenterology, infectology, endocrinology, hematology, and if it's the case, gynecology. Okay? Every single specialist I visit with, uh, in order to be perfect to have a transplant. Okay? Would you say uh, odontology also? Yeah, because even a, any infection in, in my teeth will uh, be a complication in a, in a transplant. So I have to be very, very well in all my body, okay? One of the most important uh, specialities that most of the patients stop during protocol because they cannot advance is psychiatry. Because by the time they go into psychiatry, the psychiatrist see on the patient and see on the donor that are not capable to donate, that are not capable to receive. Mentally talking. So make sure that you are mentally held to give and to receive. Okay? And this is a, this is in, yeah, well, the, the title this is laboratory image test. This is like, there's more, but this is the most common. AKG, Holter, PHS X-ray, intravenous pielogram, a renal ultrasound, renal angio-CT, a spirometry, pelvic ultrasound, if it's the case, if it's a female, mammogram, and the one that are include, that's the most important. The most important are the HLA cross-match compatibility test. Maybe the patient is quite well, in good health, good shape, but if it's not compatible, you cannot donate. It has to be compatible. Nowadays, it's not too important to have the same type of blood. Uh, nowadays, medicine uh, can skip that part and can sensibilize the patient to get a transplant. For example, if the patient, uh, the blood is divided in two, the ABO group and the RH group. So in the ABO, you are A, you are B, you are O. And RH, you are positive or negative, okay? so. If, you're, if you are O positive and your donor O negative, they're also got into a cross match uh, compatibility test. And if it's compatibility, that's okay. You can donate to your, to your, to your patient, okay? Okay, 
the transplant process, pre-surgery, isolation, because the receptor is going to take immunosuppressive therapy and every single bacteria surrounding the environment could affect your patient. Fasting, because it's a major surgery, immunosuppressive therapy only for the receptor, shaving pubic hair, because even a hair, it could affect, because I don't know if you know that uh, if you got a kidney transplant, you not you, you don't uh, get removed a kidney. You get a third kidney. Okay. Skin, fat tissue. Again, you cut it. The fascia, scarpe, the transversalis, the muscles. You separate. You see the the peritoneum, the pigment, and that's the 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 veins and the arteries. Then you get your new, your brand new kidney, and you connect it artery with artery, vein with vein, and finally the um, ureter with the bladder. Okay. This video is like a kidney transplant for dummies, but this is. <laughs> Very, very, um, you have to, to perform a very good surgery because uh, it's not as easy at all. Okay, then you connect the, the artery. Okay, you see if it's any leak, any, any complications. Wash all the cavity. And finally, you have to attach the ureter to the bladder. Okay? They do a small cut and they insert a tube, but it's a, a observable. To, it's like a guide to make sure that the, the ureter is inside the bladder. Okay? And finally, you start to covering all the layers, and as simple as that, that's a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, the post-operatory for the donor is a recovery from four to five days on the hospital. Total recovery at home, one month at last. Uh, general surgical wound care, like a normal normal wound, uh, only soap and water, and that's it. Uh, monitoring the renal status over six months to be everything is okay. And it does not specify any special diet for the donor. Okay? So, but my aunt said, always said, I only have one, so I have to take care of my only uh, my only kidney, so they eat well, eat, make exercise, everything, okay? For us, it's very, very different, okay? This is like the the scar that actually is also Selena Gomez's scar uh, for the for the kidney. I take a picture, no, no. <laughs> for, for ourselves, for the receptor, the recovery in the hospital, at least we remain seven days. Okay, in that seven days, it's hell, okay, because uh, the visit is only twice a day, only 15 minutes each visit. And then you have to be measured on the vital side every 30 minutes, even when you're asleep. You have a, a, a catheter for the urinary, the urinary catheter, um, the, one, the catheter to drain all the blood, the, the IV catheter, now you are uh, cover all your body with, with devices, okay? Then you finally, uh, uh, the hospital finish, and then you go to isolation in your private room for another three weeks. You, you don't go out unless you have to go to the, to the nephrologist. You don't go out to your room. So I get a crystal door in order to see the, the outside. My birthday was inside my room with all my friends outside the door and 
like this. Uh, another three weeks to complete a month. Uh, then general surgical wound care, like um, C-section, is not too, no, is not too specific uh, uh, treatment. Is painless. I, I don't feel like much pain during the the post surgery. Once I sneeze, it was very very painful. But uh, rather than that, I don't have any, I don't experience any pain. Household in, uh, isolation another two months. Uh, you can go around your house freely, but you cannot go outside. And then finally, isolation from crowded places, cinemas theaters, malls, and when large amount of people gather, you cannot go another three months and return to, to normal life up to six months after you got into surgery. Monitoring of renal status for a lifetime, I, every single two months, three months, I go to my nephrologist, immunosuppressant medication for a lifetime, and time for kidney transplant for a lifetime. Okay, and this is the happy news. Our state, Jalisco, and because of Guadalajara, is the first place in the whole world for kidney transplant. We, as uh, uh, this city, make most transplant in the world than any any other, inclusive. Uh, Guadalajara is compared with another countries because the large amount of, of transplant that we got here in Guadalajara. Sometimes it's more than one in, in, in a day, and you can also count more than 365 in a year. There's a lot of transplant every single day, every single week, every day, all the year, you, got, you can have a kidney transplant, okay? So, um, for me, that's it. This is my own experience by now, I'm quite all right. I get married, I got a little girl. My life is normal as you are. I could travel, I could do a lot of things that I, I cannot imagine that I will do. And um, for me, it's a lifetime experience. I got 11 years that I have been transplanted next April. And I feel very, very well, okay? So I remember the words of my nurse that said to me that your kidney will last as you take care of the kidney, okay? So myself, 11 years, and the first uh, transplanted person in Guadalajara, over 45 years that I've been transplanted, okay? So nowadays, it's uh, more easy to take care of those pathologies. And for me, it's very important you to know this information because I don't know, Sad but true. Some of you can develop this uh, disease, I don't know, in 30 years, in 40 years, if you don't care, maybe your father is a diabetic, your mother has hypertension, or you have those risk factors with you, and you can develop actually the chronic kidney disease. So be careful, is without symptoms. Remember, uh, how could you prevent, make a lab test every year to make sure that everything is okay according to the, your kidney, okay? There's very cheap uh, lab test to, to make sure about this, uh, the CBC. Uh, there's a, the, the, the one that measures glucose, the urea, the creatinine to make sure the function of the kidney and a urine test to make sure that proteins is not surrounding the, the urine. And if everything is all right, you can be uh, well. Okay, so you were rather young, and um, you obviously didn't have, you don't have lupus, correct? No. So what happened? What happened? Okay. <laughs> I got my my kidneys get smaller. I got like Barbie kidneys. No, very 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 little. <laughs> and um, the reason, the specific reason. Mm, no nephrologist told me the specific reason. They told me that the most common reason would be agglomerular disease that cause the, 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 the kidneys get smaller, okay? And obviously the function uh, is uh, getting worse, but a specific 
cost in, in my case, I don't know it yet. Hmm? Okay, and then since it's not symptomatic, like you don't yeah. show symptoms, what was your first symptom? My first, okay, the, the, my chief complaint, okay? <laughs> <laughs> my chief uh, was uh, atypical, was blur vision. Uh, I was finishing high school, I was pretending to enter to the medical school, I don't get uh, the, uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, chance, and then I go to work to, with my mom, and I start to see only with, with one eye, I feel like if I have some pain inside my, my eye, I, I start to, to scratch and everything, and I, I'm, I don't see what, what's happening. I cover my other eye, and I realize that I that I have poor vision in that eye. I go to to a physician, was a to ophthalmologist, and they say to me that they have like um, bruises inside my 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 eye because of the increase of the pressure of the eye. And then they measure my blood pressure and was very increased. And my, the ophthalmologist suspects that something with the kidney uh, can happen. So they prescribe all the, the lab tests and I got those results. That's my case. But most of the patient uh, fatigue and nausea and vomiting are the most, common, the most common cases. So my advice to you is if you don't do it since now, every single year uh, uh, perform a, a lab test to make sure that everything is okay. If you have little kids, as myself, uh, even if it's one year old, I, uh, my little kid got every single year a, a lab test because I want to prevent her that develop a, a, a disease that, that I got. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I actually have personal experience with, I have kids, and I have seen um, in the U.S., like when they hit, when they've done a CDC, like the urea and nitrogen, and some of those things have come off, come have come back off. But because of, they don't have any symptoms and they don't show any other signs of anything else, they don't want to just attack that number as being bad. Is that a U.S. thing? And maybe in Mexico they would actually pay more attention to. Just that, those single numbers? Uh, okay, uh, because urea and creatinine, uh, when it's increased, the, the, the range, is not always because of, of kidney failure. Not always. Maybe if you got a large amount of, of meat in your, in your diet every single day, you can also have a range of, uh, increased range of, of urea, most common urea, and also creatinine. Dehydration also can lend you in those increases of, of levels. So you have to uh, see those those parameters in comparing to the rest of the of the laboratory test to make sure if it's the kidney or only a specific that that thing and only attack that specific issue. Okay, yes, ready? Uh, did you have any risk factors prior to this? Like, does your family, your your mom, your dad have hypertension? No, no, n no one in my family uh, is diabetic. Only is uh, had uh, hypertension. The my old uncles, and uh, I'm the only one that have developed a uh, uh, renal failure until now. Okay, and my my follow up question is: if the damaged kidney is still in there. Is it still doing anything, or it just sits there? If my what? The, the damaged kidney, uh -huh. it's still in there. Yeah. So is it doing anything, or is it just non-active? No, it's doing anything. It's useless, totally useless. We, uh, the, the, the surgeons don't remove it, because imagine, if you remove both kidneys, then you put the, the, the new kidney, and if the new kidney doesn't work, uh, you are... You can't. You could die very, very soon so. because you don't have your, you like the connection to 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 have urine or right. things like that. So that's the procedure with everyone. In everything, the only indication to remove a kidney is neoplasia or an increase because a mass or a tumor that is very, very large the the, the kidney. You can you can pull it up. Okay, but if don't. 
you you keep use your unhealthy kidneys. Okay. Any question? No, my mother said that when I was a little kid, I got a respiratory infection, very severe respiratory infection, and in a very long time, I get uh, antibiotics, and I don't get well until a new um, pediatrician comes and change completely the, the diagnosis and the treatment, and then I get well. And my mother supposed that that was the reason that could cause the, the the damage of the kidney. Remember that this this damage is through several years. Okay, maybe I start developing a kidney failure when I was a little kid, and until 19 years old, I I got the major symptoms and was a terminal uh, renal failure. Okay, so that uh, also you have to be very careful with all of the medication that you that you take because every single medication. Uh, could affect uh, the function of the kidney if you abuse on that medication. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry if this is a personal question, but <laughs> like, did you ask your aunt, or did she volunteer, or okay. how, how did how did you go about finding a? Okay. <laughs> the first the first uh, person who raised her hand was my mother. Okay, but uh, a requirement for a donor also is by the time they are removing the transplant, they have to be sure that all the renal function uh, is fully covered with one kidney. And my mother doesn't have that. The, the physician told, told her that, I don't know, in 15, 20 years, he, she will develop a renal failure. So they rather prefer another person. Okay. I got no siblings. So my, um, my doctor said, search, from the most uh, close uh, relative of your mother to to the la to the less relative, okay. So I got fortunately I wa I got 24 possible donors uh, from family and friends, but my my aunt that is the the sister of my mother uh, raised, raised wow. her hand and we got no any complication during the transplant protocol. How is she doing that? Perfect. He ha she has uh, three boys. She, he, she has already, uh, at that time, uh, those three boys. And they got previously um, a discal hernia, uh, surgery, uh, C-sections, and everything. She's also a, a physician. So uh, she takes care very well with her diet, exercise, and everything. We actually make conference. A live conference to people who want to donate or what or have this kind of problem in order to see us and see that everything is okay because sometimes they don't want to do anything because they think and the third kidney is placed on the front part of your body on the pelvic region I got my two damaged kidneys and a third kidney okay in the pelvic region why in the pelvic region because if you uh, study embryology, you will notice that when we when we were inside our mouths, our kidneys was were in that places, and then they start getting up at the level of uh, actually we have the kidneys, and also because of the pelvic arteries and the pelvic veins are the best way to attach the new kidney. Okay, so that's the reason. So shaving pubic hair is very important also, and I know an enema is very is necessary because they can infect uh, during surgery. Okay. Okay, and so that uh, an enema. Okay, an enema is a substance that goes right through your anus, a liquid that uh, causes immediate diarrhea in order to clean or your your colon. Okay. It's necessary. Sad. <laughs> and we, uh, my, my aunt and me, were, they're going to be worse than right now, okay? So, like, living examples, no? Okay. Any? Yes? Uh, statistically, is there a decrease in life expectancy in the recipient? 
I don't hear it very well. Now. <coughs> Sorry. Statistically, is there a decrease in life expectancy in the recipient? Uh, the life expectancy has been increased through through the years. Uh, for example, the first uh, successful transplant in the world was in Paris, 1953, and they last only four months. Okay, uh, in, with identical twins, and uh, then the the in states was in Boston. I guess it was in 1960 something, and only last a couple of years, but uh, nowadays the increase of life expectancy is, is better. So uh, like for years. example, the first uh, transplanted person here in Guadalajara was in 1978, I guess, and is still alive. Okay? And right now we can see that uh, the life expectancy is more. Okay? You can, the, the, the medication are less aggressive, there are more medications, there are more therapies to the treatment, there are more, uh, you can play more with the diet, everything, and you can increase the life expectancy. And also with the donor, because sometimes they say that the donor, the, the life expectancy is less, no, it's like the same. Sometimes it happens that the, the receiver lives longer than the donor, uh, sometimes because another complication. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for the for the donor, do they also have to do isolation or? No, no, no. Mm, only on the pre-surgery that is with the also with the receiver, but after surgery is without without isolation because she or he doesn't get any immunosuppressive therapy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All my life for for a lifetime. At first, at first, I take large amount of, of mm, mm, or dosage, and then I still getting lower, lower dosage. Okay. okay well, I I take four medication and one supplement. The first and more important uh, medication it's called the brand is Rapanune, and the substance is Sirolimus of one milligram. I take one milligram every single day. The second one is. Um, Mycophelonic acid, and I take 500 milligrams per day, is one pill also. And prednisone, uh, five milligrams, one pill every single day. Low start time because I develop hypertension, I take twice a day, uh, five, uh, 50 milligrams is a, is a pill. And my supplement, because those uh, immunosuppressive medications increase the level of the lipids, of triglycerides, and, and and cholesterol, I, I, I have to take a, a omega 3, uh, um, omega 3, uh, the, the uh, fish oil, in, in order to maintain the levels of cholesterol and triglycerides. Okay? Yeah, uh, the exercise that I can perform is like a long exercise, like jogging, like walking, biking, swimming, but contact uh, sports. Are not allowed because imagine a punch in the in the in the kidney. It could be very severe for me or for all the, for example, soccer, uh, football, uh, taekwondo, karate. I'm not allowed. Okay. So you said um, that the, the lung secretion relax, and that's, that's good, even though the Joe Mary girl and she was 45 at the time. Yeah. Uh huh. 56 year old kidney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, will that yeah, it's very, it's, it's very important. It's a, it's a great question. Okay, at the time I got transplanted, my kidney was 45 years old. So, fortunately, it was a very healthy kidney. Okay, because all the the lifestyle of my aunt that exercise well, uh, good diet and everything. But I also had to make sure that of that then. Uh, I have to increase the the, the diet because I have to make sure that the diet is correct, the exercise and everything because I, I have to realize that my kidney is older than me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is the donation of the kidney um, an adrenal gland included? Is that what? Adrenal gland. 
Ah, no, 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 no. It's, the, it's, it's only it's only the, the kidney because my adrenal gland is is intact. Or that the one that I have, it, okay, in my damaged kidney. Mm -hmm. And if if we if the surgeon remove the the adrenal uh, gland of the of the donor, they can affect severely the, 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 because of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the body, the body, the organs, the inside organs cover that hole. It's not a missing hole. No. The organs make the, the process and the, the fill the empty space. Okay. That's it. Uh -huh. But yes, it's a, it's a long. Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, everybody for being here. I'm, I'm honored to, to have you here. All those were my, actually, my students. I'm, I'm very grateful to have you here, guys. This is, would be my, my last class. And I want to give uh, an, a final class to you in, in order to, to thank you to, to being my students. I, I like very much this job since I got, I, I got my degree. Yeah, I got several jobs, and I'm not lying when I'm saying that this is the best job that I have until now, okay? So, most of this is because of you guys. So, uh, I'm very thankful for that, and in every single thing that I can help you, there's uh, social media now, and you can contact me uh, through those, through those uh, accounts. I'm very popular, so I got two Facebook accounts. <laughs> the first, the first account is my personal account, and the second account is for medical purposes. The thing is, I I upload and make up articles and videos, but the thing is that are on Spanish because it's for the general population. Okay, and the 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 other one also also is in Spanish, but. If you want to ask me anything, I don't mind to be in English, okay? And my, my email also, if you have any doubt, any question for your student career, everything, I'm very, if I can do it, I'd be very glad to, to answer those questions, okay? So, thank you very much, and we'll see you around, I guess, and by the time I can get into the residency and get uh, again here, I don't know, but, Thank you, thank you. And I get thank you. Okay?